Hello! Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> Mr. Waro, why do you always do that whole thing? I really don't know. I just started it and, you know, it just became part of what I do. I know. Maybe I should get a new intro. I'm thinking about it. Hey, have any suggestions? Let me know! <laughs> anyway, welcome my friends! Oh, I'm so glad you came! Because you know what? If you love math, I love math, we love math, and we could do a song just like the Barney. No, we won't. Okay, let's focus, Mr. War. We have less than 4.7 in front of us. I see it. Woohoo! And our topic of the day is going to be multiply decimals. <laughs> okay, essential question. What strategies can you use to place a decimal point in a product? Okay, that sounds very complicating. You know what? I think by the end of this lesson, you're going to be going, woohoo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's connect. Let's connect. It says, you can use what you have learned about patterns, which we know mathematics is all about patterns. It says, and place value to place the decimal point in the product when you multiply. That's right two decimals. It says there, when you take one times one-tenth is going to equal to one-tenth, right? That's the good old identity property. But look what happens here. When we have one-tenth times one-tenth, look at that. The decimal place, yeah, it's moved. Look at that. Now we have one-hundredth. And when we multiply one-hundredth by one-tenth, Look at that. The decimal place moved even one more time, right, to the left. So, you know, I ask, well, why does it matter where you put the decimal point in the product anyway? It does matter, my friends. Yes, if you place the decimal point in the wrong place, well, then the product is going to be too small or too large, even though the digits are in the correct order. See, it says over here, remember... When a number is multiplied by a decimal, the decimal point moves one place to the left in the product for each decreasing place value being multiplied. And each one is the example that we saw how it was going from one tenth. Now I think we need to, you guessed it, unlock the problem. That's right. It's real world, baby. You know it. Yeah. And look at what we have over here. Hey, look at this guy. Come on. Camera guy. Come on. Thank you. Yes, look at that guy. What is he? He's a male leopard seal. You know, he looks cute. But I heard those things are pretty vicious, guy, you know? They are, well, they're carnivorous, but they they seem like top predator kind of animals. I don't know. Anyway, let's look at what the problem says about this. It says a male leopard seal is measured and has a length of 2.8 meters. A male elephant seal is about 1.5 times as long. What length? is the male elephant seal. Okay, I'm surprised they're only that much. Well, those elephant seals, they seem huge, but you know what? I guess in my mind, I'm thinking, elephant, of course, an elephant is huge, but those elephant seals, man, they're huge. They're massive, you know? And it's only 1.5 times as long. See, one times as long means it's exactly the same length. So when I look at numbers, I, I try to take that number and see if I can decompose it a little bit to help me understand. And so he's definitely longer, but not as long as I thought. Anyway, Mr. War, can you get back on track? Yes, I can. Okay, multiply. So we're going to take 1 and 5 tenths. We're going to multiply that with 2 and 8 tenths. Now it does say one way is to use place value. I love that this math today is always about here's one way you could do it and here's another way you can do it because there are multiple ways, methods sometimes to get to the correct answer. See, when I was in school, you did it one way. Anyway, so let's take a look at it. It says multiply as with whole numbers. Okay, place the decimal point. Think. Uh, this is step one. Oh, multiply. Did we multiply them yet? Uh, they did it for us, didn't they? Let's see how they've got this set up. So they have our 28 and our 15. I see they took the decimal points out. They just multiplied that all the way through. And 28 times 15 is equal to 420. Now it is showing that 2.8, uh, I see, I'm sorry, 28 times that 1 tenth that was in the number is now 2 and 8 tenths. That's one place value. The 15 was really 1 and 5 tenths. So they multiplied that by 1 tenth and got 1 and 5 tenths. That's one place value. See, all they've done is they've multiplied the digits and now they're coming over here and they're just putting the decimal in where it would go. And it is showing in order to remove that decimal from the factor, you'd have to remove it one place value. It's like multiplying by 10. 
that gives us our 28. So 2.8 becomes 28 by a power of 10 if we multiply by 10. So that's why it says one place value. And then we have the same with one and five tenths. So let's go ahead and it says place the decimal point so the value of the decimal is, we're supposed to figure out what goes in the blank. Uh, well, let's, let me write the number down here first. So it's telling us we need to put that 400 duani in there, right? Okay, let's do that. But because we have two place values here, one here, one there, that's making our two tenths. It's two place values. So we're not multiplying by this, we're multiplying by one tenth and another tenth. Well, two tenths is a hundred, okay? Hundredth. And so I need to move the decimal place to the place value to the left here. See, it's almost like I'm taking out one place value here, taking another place value out here. That's two. So now I have to put those two back in and I end up with four uh, and 20 hundredths. So this should be, the decimal is going to be hundredths. That's what that is because we have right here, if you can see it, okay, hundredths. So the length of the male elephant seal is about, is about four and two tenths meters, 4.2 meters longer. Now, I hope that made sense for you. Step one just said multiply like they're just whole numbers is what we did. And to remove that decimal out of each one of those decimals, we had to multiply by 10. We're multiplying it by 10. And then what you have to do is, I kind of think of then we have to divide by 100 because 10 times 10 is 100. So we kind of multiply by 10 by 10. We have two powers of 10. Now we're going to divide by 100. And if you divide by 100, that's going to move the decimal place to it. This is an inverse operation in a sense, doing and then undoing. I don't know. I hope that was helpful. Now since to analyze, we're looking at pra uh, mathematical practice one on this one. It says that what if you multiply two and eight tenths by one and 74 hundredths? What would be the place value of the product? Explain your answer. Well now based on that last problem, I can see that right away. The two and eight tenths, if you were to multiply that by one and 74 hundredths, see here we have hundredths. And here we just have a tenth. Last time we had tenths times tenths, right? And that gave us hundreds. So now if we have tenths, and now here we have hundreds, that means we're going to we're gonna go to the thousands place because there's three powers of ten there. And so I can use the same pattern. In this case, it was one tenth times, here we have one hundredth. And so then that means that your, your actually answer is going to have to be in that thousands format. Okay? So let me write that down. And keep in mind, there's a lot of different ways that you can think of these numbers. There's different ways you can say things. Different math programs, whatever, will demonstrate things differently. And it's that kind of understanding from one to the next to the other. They all very well may be, they, they will all make sense in their own way. It's just important that you find the way that's making sense for you. Okay, page master. Woohoo! Yes, see, there's another way. How about that? Use estimation. We've done estimation before. It's a quick guess. It gives us a, a rounded number, if you will. It says you can use an estimate to place the decimal point in a product. See here we have multiply. 7 and 8 tenths times 3 and 12 hundredths. Step 1 says estimate by rounding each factor to the nearest whole number. So 7.8, well, it's just going to be 8. Nothing tricky about that. And 3 and 12 hundredths? It's going to be three. So our answer should come around 24. Now it says multiply as with whole numbers. Okay, cameraman, let's move on over. Thank you. So here we have eight times two, 16. We want to make sure we keep our digits aligned. So crucial. Eight times one is eight plus one is nine. And then eight times three is 24. Now I have to, that's right, placeholder. You know, that sounds kind of like page master. Placeholder. Now we have 14. Carry the one. Ooh, another one. Now we have 7 plus 1 is 8. And of course, 7 times 3 is 21. Or at least the last time I checked. We're adding these two partial products together to get 6. There's 13. Carry the 1. That's 12. That's 13 again. Carry the 1. 3. That's 4. And then there's my 2. So, 24,336? I think not. But we will put that number over here. Uh, this time without the comma, because we need to look at our step three says use the estimate to place the decimal point. OK, so we kind of we could say we do that. Think the product should be close to your estimate. Yes, it should. But also think this in order to remove this decimal from this factor one, two, I would have to multiply by 100. That's two place values here. I'd have to multiply it by by 10. OK, 
Okay, and 100 times 10 is 1,000. So since I multiplied by 10 and 100 to remove that, I need to divide by that same amount. So if I were to divide by 10, it would be one time. If I were to divide by two, then I end up over here. And yeah, of course, 24 and 336 thousandths is close to my estimate of 24. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. See how this lesson's just coming together little by little? I just, just want to get so excited about math. See, the more you just kind of keep doing it, kind of light bulb comes on from time to time. Sometimes we don't always get it right away, but if we keep working at it, it happens. It just does. Now it's about the sharing show. And whenever I see the sharing show, I always kind of think this is a good opportunity for you to get out your little math board. <laughs> I was just kidding. So, and then that way you can just put the video on pause, work out the problems, you know, and then, hey, come back and see how you did. It's a great way to see that you're on the right track. The directions say place the decimal point in the product. Okay, it says think. Think. A hundredth is being multiplied by a tenth. Use the pattern. And this is the way that they're teaching you. Use the pattern. So when you have those two decimal places here, multiplied by one over here, we need to add that on, right? We're really going to get an answer in the thousands. So in this case, because we have three decimal places, it's going to be five and 68 thousandths. Okay, that's where the decimal point's going to go. Okay, that was easy. Number two, they already did the first part for us. And it says estimate, because they're estimating this number as 7, and they're estimating that number as 1. So, yeah, so 8.8 .8 and 16 hundredths would be the correct answer. But again, let's look at that. We have 1 tenth and 1 tenth. When you multiply that, that tenth by another tenth, remember, it's going to give us that hundredth. Okay, that's the, the design of this lesson and the way to learn it. Okay, number three, it says find the product. So now we don't have to do anything. So what I'm going to do is exactly that. I'm going to ignore the decimal point, and I'm just going to multiply them as if they were just whole numbers. And that means all I have is 9 and 8. I don't have anything else. Well, 9 times 8 is 72. That's one of those great times table problems. So, But now I have a tenth here, and I have another tenth down here. So that's almost like and the pattern is, right, it's going to become hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and put a decimal point here and zero. That works for you. You could also think, hey, I'm multiplying by 110 to get that out, multiply by another 10 to get that out. That means I have to divide by 100, and that will give me 72 hundredths. Okay, moving on to number four. Multiply them as if the decimal didn't exist. Placeholder. Now I have 25 again. Carry the two. I have 20 and the two. That's 22. Boy, that's kind of weird. And then I have 40 and 42. So I check, make sure my digits are lined up. Okay, make sure I don't make any mistakes. I'm adding. So here I have five, seven, four. This is six together here. And then I have four. Now 46,475, pretty large considering our decimal factors here. But I see one power 10 here, okay, if you will, or one tenth. And I have another tenth. So the pattern is if I have one tenth times one tenth, right, I'm going to end up with hundreds. And that's going to give my answer as 464 and 75 hundredths. Okay, cool. Number five. Okay, so I got this four digit number here. Looks like it could be 6,453. Except we have some decimal planes here. Uh, we have hundredths, right? And we're going to be multiplying that by a tenth, right? So that's going to give us a thousandth. That's three place values. One, two, three. We end up with a number as six and 453 thousandths. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, this is Math Talk, Mathematical Practices. So we'll explain how you might know the place value of the product for exercise five before you solve. Okay, well, we looked at this one time before. In another problem, there was a similar question. Well, see, we can, we, we're recognizing the pattern here. You know, I can use what I know about patterns. And since a hundredth is being multiplied by a tenth, I can use the pattern that, that one hundredth, 0 0.01 times 1 tenth, which is 0 0.1, is equal to 0 0.001, which is 1,000. This shows me that the product will have thousands, okay? So here I have, I can use what I know about patterns. We talked about that, and since a hundredth is being multiplied by a tenth, I can use the pattern, one hundredth times one tenth is gonna equal the thousands. This shows me that the product will have thousands. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! Hey, my friends, yes, it is another math video it's completion yes my friends it's the end <laughs> hey a friend to the end hey you guys thank you so much for coming aboard i appreciate 
now. Live long and prosper.